Okay, so this uh, documentation here explaining how to uh, create your release version leads us into the next part of what I had in my notes, right? So we had, okay, create developer certificate. That's using the key tool.exe app of Java. We did that. That was just following the instructions. Okay, set our app to release mode via Keystore. That's what we just did right now. Uh, uh, one subtle thing that I didn't notice, but now that I reread it, it makes sense. Uh, it's set up here. Choose one of the Android emulators or physical devices. But then you see here, do not select a simulator. So whoops, I was equating simulator and emulator. They're not. So perhaps if you're having trouble, make sure you're not selecting a simulator. None of these. It's either device or emulator, preferably device. So um, that was here. Set up your app to release mode via key store. Make sure you select device. Not simulate. OK, so after that point, um, we saw in the folder it created android-release.apk. That's the part that comes up here. Upload your app to your dev developer account. So uh, we're going to segue over to this topic for a little bit. Um, and uh, this is pretty straightforward. And this is what's uh, getting us closer to, um, to the end. So uh, on your uh, web browser, we're going to log into developer.com. Amazon.com. Over the weekend, you should have created this account, or as I mentioned a few times earlier today, you should have already done it by now, too. So, all I'm going to do is just sign in. If you don't have an account, you will need to go through the steps of creating one, which you should have done over the weekend. So, just go ahead and sign in. When you created the account over the weekend, it asked you for several screens to, um, to fill in. It asked you for your name and your phone number, and there was um, various optional things like a fax number and all of that. So that was straightforward. There was a screen that asked you, do you plan to make money off of your apps? If you select no, then it would let you proceed. If you select yes, it would say, OK, great. Now fill in your bank routing number and bank account and all of that. So if you do want to make money off of your apps, either on Amazon or Google or iOS, uh, you do have to connect some sort of bank information. Uh, that's just uh, standard, because obviously you need to get paid somehow. They don't mail you checks. They do it all uh, through bank transfers. Uh, so after I sign in, I, I see I, I could go to all of these various um, screens. We want to go, uh, the most direct would be, I guess, up here, Developer Console. They've changed this a little bit recently. Because now you can make apps for Alexa, and you can use their Amazon Web Services, whatever Dash Services is. Oh, that's that reordering thing. Anyway, on the top, click here, Developer Console. You're going to see a bunch of documentation that might be useful for you and announcements and such. I currently have no notifications. And at the top, I have apps and app services. Go ahead and click there. So just to pause here for a moment, Amazon App Store focuses on releasing Android apps. It doesn't release iPhone apps. Uh, the iPhone ecosystem, the iOS ecosystem, is very closed. You can only release iPhone apps through their system. Whereas for Android, you can go through the official Google App Store or Amazon App Store. And you can um, create this account for free, as, as you did over the weekend. You can upload as many apps as you want, and they will be public. They will be live pretty quickly, usually in one day. Whereas if you go publish through iOS, there's usually some sort of process of several days, maybe a week or more. 
Now, you can publish apps here and you can unpublish them. You can delete them if you don't want people to download them anymore. So for just the school project, for the knowledge of it, for the assessment of it, again, you can make this all up very, just completely make it all up. That is totally fine. Uh, under Add a New App, we've got a triangle as well. And if you see there, you see that uh, we can uh, make apps for Android, mobile web, PC, and Mac, but not iPhone, not iOS, not you know uh, iPads. Uh, so you can uh, click Android, or if you just click the Add New App directly, it also asks you the same thing there. Get a little preview of what's the difference. So if you just click the triangle, go to Android, it's done. If you click the, the button, it asks you. There's several screens to fill in that are not complicated, but it's good to have like a guide the first time. New App Submission. Uh, and there's several fields with a required asterisk. So app title. This is again uh, where you're going to type your uh, name, your last name, your last name, and the name of this project, CBDB. This can be changed. And for just the purposes of the assessment and the schoolwork, um, it doesn't have to be, you know, your real app. App SKU, SKU, Stock Keeping Unit. This is optional, a unique to your app string that you define yourself. This is if you are publishing several different apps, you have different versions of the apps, one for Windows, one for Mac, whatever. You can name these things your own thing. Like, uh, I would recommend don't put anything here. But the, what you could put here is something like you know CBDB zero one. This is just some unique identifier to identify your app for yourself in your own records. You can skip it completely. Category. So looking in here, we've got a variety of categories. Uh, if you browse these, etc., etc., which might your opinion be where would our app fit? Books and comics. Books and comics might make sense. Novelty. Maybe utilities, yes. So there's no wrong answer here. You can even put it over in, you know, finance. Even though it doesn't make sense to put it there, there's no wrong answer. This is just for your app to be visible by, by the right people. If people are looking for a financial app and they find yours, obviously they're going to ignore it because it doesn't seem to really be what they're looking for. So any of these that makes sense is the right answer, and it can be changed. I'm going to go with books and comics. It is an app about books and comics, yes, but it's also an app that has a utility of storing your comics. So novelty, I guess, might even work. Books and comics. Customer support contact. When you created the account, you filled information. Some of it was optional. Some of it was required, like, a, like an email and such. If you filled that in previously, you can just say use what I used before uh, or fill in something new. And the required here is, is an address, uh, email address. For the purposes of the class, make it up at email.com, whatever. You can put a real email if you want. That's fine. I don't really have that email address, so that's not going anywhere for real. But it is a required address. If you were doing this as a real app, you would obviously fill in all of this correctly. You would fill in an email address where people can contact you for tech support. You want to have ca happy customers. You want to answer their questions, so you have a legitimate email address. Save.
there's a button that eventually says submit app at the top or the bottom um, but before we can actually submit the app we have to get six items completed general information tab is green it's completed if I need to change any of this I have an edit button at the bottom if I did want to change the email address or the category, I can edit this screen. I have some unique identification information here. You don't really ever need this, but it's listed there. Next, Availability and Pricing tab. Click there. Where would you like your app to be available? Is your app free? And when are you publishing it? So I want my app to be available at all countries where Amazon sells apps, which is like all 200 countries and territories of the world. Or you say only selected countries and regions. I only want my uh, app to be sold in Cameroon. So OK, I can choose that. Or also Cameroon and also Venezuela and whatever. Most likely, you want it everywhere. But you can pick and choose specific territories. Is your app? free or paid. Default is free. If you activate paid, you then put in some price. I'm going to sell my app at, you know, one dollar. And it will automatically then put it into the various currencies of the world. Dollars, British pounds, euros, euros in Spain, euros in Italy, etc. Canadian dollars, Brazilian uh, units of currency, what are those called? Lira? No, that's, that's Italy. Um, anyway, you can, um, you can change it. Now, you can calculate your own price if you want. It's going to be a dollar in the US, but it's going to be one whole pound in, in England, uh, which probably is too expensive. So I would say, for this class project, free. Because uh, you know this is a great app we're making, yes, but it's probably not your great amazing app that you want to make money off of. So you could set it as a paid app, but for school purposes, free is good enough. Um, I don't believe you can switch between the two. I have to double check. I think it used to say a note somewhere that about that. But I don't believe you can go back and forth between free and paid because that, I, I believe I read that that could be abusive. That first of all, it's free, everyone loves the app, and then suddenly you're paying for it. Um, but let me do a little segue right here under the step six. Ways to make money from your apps. One way is um, up front cost 99 cents to download my app so you can get rich off of your app 99 cents at a time or more however much you want it to be five dollars 10.99 whatever you, you could also do in app purchases this is pay once to download in app purchases pay more than once as needed. This is much more common in games. I download a game, it's really fun, I pass the first 10 levels, I'm going to go to level 11, and it says, okay, now you need to purchase level 11. And then I pay 99 cents. So then, okay, great, I'm going to go to level 12. It says, now you need to purchase level 12. So I pay 99 cents. So in-app purchases are another way to make your money. Usually those are free to download, but then you pay for more content. It's just another way to make money. We've also got ads, advertisements. The app is free to download. The content in it is free. But there is some unobtrusive, but usually obtrusive, ad somewhere in the app that if you were to click on, if a user were to click on it, you make money. User clicks add, you profit. And we can set all of these up actually in this portal. I believe there's one more. I have to remember what that one is. Come back to that one. 
here's some ways to make money off of your app. I'm going to set this for free. Release date. Leave this field blank if you want it to be published right away. To defer the start, you can set a date in the future. You have probably available in the App Store a few hours after the publishing process starts. Uh, so I can set it that this app won't be released until, you know, Cinco de Mayo, sure. 5.05 in the morning on May 5th. That'll be fun. So you can do that if you want. Or if you don't set a time here, as soon as the app is approved, it'll be available, which is usually a few hours, at the most 24 hours. I'm going to say uh, publish it as soon as possible. So I'll save that. All right, we have two out of six. Let's look at description. What's the name of the app? We've already set it. We can still change it. Short description, long description, bullet points about the product, keywords for findability. There, is, there are two buttons here. One is save and one is add localization. I'm glad they changed it because they used, this used to be called something else and people were clicking on it on accident. We have the ability to write a description in many languages. Oh, it's up here, so be careful. We have the ability to make our descriptions in many languages. Default is English. After we fill this in, we want to click Save. You don't want to click Add Localization, even though it's right at the top, unless you want to create another description in another language. And it will not create it for you. It's not smart enough to translate it. So if I wanted this in English and Spanish and Hebrew, I would write the English version. I would then click Add Localization and write manually the Hebrew version, and then click it again and write the Spanish version. The only one we need is the English one. Question? OK, let me take a quick. Time zone what? Put it back to nothing because then it'll expect you to also put a day and time, uh, and it won't let you go forward until that's changed. So here, uh, this can all be changed, and um, let's see what can we write here. Short description. Um, this is where if you've got a little bit of. Um, your brand new best friend. This is where you know you've got your marketing speak. This is where you put your marketing speak speak hat on. How are you going to hype your app? How are you going to convince people that you that they want this app? So um, you're not going to be graded on being on um, writing a great marketing pitch for your for your app. Um, so if you want to be a little more serious, so we can say something like, you know. Um, Catalog your comic uh, collection the easy way. And you've got um, how many characters? You've got 250 characters in total to write something. Uh, you should take advantage of all of these fields. If this were your real legitimate app that I want people to find and download, I want to craft my message on all of these fields the best that I can to get found. So making our notes here, upload your app, 
set up descriptions in terms of SEO, search engine optimization. What phrases, what keywords, what concepts can I latch on to of people searching to help find help them find my app? So I can say think in terms of people searching. If someone were to be searching about a comic book organizing app, what phrases and keywords might they use? I would think about that. I would think about how to incorporate that in my verbiage here. But simply, okay, catalog your comic books. And then here under the long description, you've got 1,200 keywords to then write even longer. I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but I could say something like easy to use database um, system to keep track of your comics. Save all your favorite superhero books. Store your Marvel and DC collection. Whatever, I'm just putting in keywords, right? People might search for Marvel, they might search for Spider-Man. I might write, uh, save your Spider-Man comics. The easy way, you know, just writing something in terms of marketing, in terms of SEO, in terms of keywords of what people could be searching for on Google or Yahoo or Bing or Amazon. They're in their app store on their device and they're looking for a comic catalog system. And therefore, I can um, perhaps get found. My app could get found. You have up to 12, actually 4,000. I looked at it wrong. You've got 1,200 characters for the short description, 250 characters for the name of your app. You've got 4,000 characters for the long description. bullet points one per line up to 10 so you can tell me off the top of your head what what are some things that this app does save, save what comics. specifically title. title save titles of comics good we can add photo to each so that sort of idea what are the things that the comic does specifically so that when people look at this listing and it suggests your app plus someone else's app, what are the things that you can write here that will make yours stand out from the competition? And um, you, can, you get up to 10 of these bullet points. You just press enter. You get a new bullet point. Save titles of comics. Add photo to each. Easily scan barcodes. of the comic, powerful editing system, faster than a speeding bullet. Now we might not be able to prove that, but you know what I'm saying, you just want to put, um, you want to put what are the things that this that this app does, powered by kryptonite. Well, not really, truth in advertising. It's powered by a plain old lithium ion battery. Keywords. Search terms used to increase the discoverability of your app. Use comma or white space to separate your terms. So if I have right here, comic, comma, database, comma, if I want to do comic book, you have to be careful because that'll count it as two different words. You want to put it in quotes. Oops. Uh, there's comic database, comic book. DW, Disney, whatever. You want to put some keywords about uh, what uh, your app is about. Those are the names of uh, comic companies.
Again, this can all be changed whenever you'd like, because I believe actually the grammar for this sentence is a little off. I would think about going in to change it. Uh, but after this is filled in, you want to click Save, not Add Localized Description, unless you are going to write your all of these things in another language. Save. I have three out of six. Let's jump over to content rating, then we'll be back to images. Content rating. You need to rate your app so that parents uh, know that if it's good for their, for their kids. We have none, moderate, and strong. We have to uh, uh, honestly answer these about what what does our app have of these features? So, is there uh, is there violence in our app? No, Con cartoon violence. No. Now, the the thing about that's sort of like not exactly iffy. Or a, a person could save a comic full of violence. A person could save a comic full of nudity. But our app itself doesn't have that. So that's user generated content. So ours is safe. Ours is doesn't have drugs, doesn't have nudity, doesn't have sex. Mine doesn't at least, so whatever yours is. Uh, no intolerance, no profanity. Uh, is it academic? Is it for educational purposes? Not really. It's not teaching you anything, so no. Additional info. Account creation or other personal information collected? Does our app do that? Yes, a person creates an account. They put in their email address. They put in a password. They create an account. And I would say it's a little bit safer to err on the side of caution. Yes, accounts are created. We're not storing them in our database or in our cloud or anything like that. That's only being stored on the device. But it'd be safer to say that, yes, that stuff is being saved somewhere. Because when a person loads your app for the first time and it says, oh, this is asking for an email, I didn't know it would, let, I didn't know it would do that. Because we put no. Why? Yes. We're not doing any advertising. Is it directed to kids under under 13? Um, anyone that wants to store their collection of any age, we're not specifically targeting kids under 13. It's it's anyone. We put no. Is there any gambling in here? No. Location detection or location based. We haven't added. We might. Uh, we might add the feature for GPS and such. So that's when we would put yes. At the moment, our app doesn't have GPS accessing features. User generated content or user to user communication. Yes or no. Yes, the person themselves is putting data into the app. The name of the comic, a photo of the comic, um, the price, or whatever fields we have. So yes, the user is generating that. If the person is um, creating a, an account, which we put yes on the first one, it's then required that we put in an address of our privacy policy. If we don't put, if we put no on the first one, it won't have that as required. But our app does allow account creation, so we would turn that on. This is required for our class project. You know, you can make that up. But if this were a real app. You know, you'd, you'd want to have a link to your to some file, some address online that does specify what is the privacy policy. And I don't know what that is. I've never written one. Here's what you can do. You go online and search. You can search for um, app privacy policy example or template. You know, you could go online and, and, and search and go off and find examples of these and put them online. At the moment, I'm just going to put an address that is not real. Uh, it should still work fine, but when it's your real app and you do need to 
and you do collect information like account creation and such, you should have some sort of um, privacy policy online. Question. It is collected on their browser, their device. Yes, but again, what I'm saying is it, it might be safer. You don't want any liabilities. In your privacy policy, you could state that and say, no, none of your personal information is being stored on our servers. We do not read that at all. And then other information you want to say, just to make sure, just to cover yourself. You know how we live in a very litigious culture, so you may just want to be safe. Regarding privacy policy, search for an example to use. So I'm going to put something there because it requires it, and I'll save. I have four out of six. Let's, if you needed to change any of this, remember you have edit at the bottom. Let's go to binary files. This is another one to be careful about. We have save and add binary at the top, and we have save and add binary at the bottom, and save. You really should only be selecting the orange save. This one is about if you're going to upload different versions of your APK file. Conceivably, what you could do is upload a version of your APK file for certain devices and another version for different devices. Maybe you've got features that are not compatible in old Android devices. So you could upload two different APKs and then depending on the person's device, and this is an Android 4 device and this is an Android 6 device, you can upload different versions, conceivably. You usually don't need to, so you only need to do a regular save. What it asks up here, okay, apply Amazon DRM, would you like it to uh, further you know, uh, encrypt it and make it safe and such? Usually, yes, you don't want your app to get stolen, especially if you're making money off of it. If you uh, have uh, personal opinions about DRM and such, you could put no, either or. There's no problem, but I'll leave it as the default. There's a bunch of unique information you should not be looking at. This is all my unique information, but that's OK. And then over here, binary file. Uh, you can actually click on this to open up to open a window to upload, or you can drop your APK into it. If you did manage to create your APK file from earlier, there's mine right there, Smith CVDB APK. You can go through this process actually and drop it in. Drag and drop onto the target, that little box. It'll upload it, it'll scan it. If someone else is using the same package ID it'll it'll give you warnings so it read my config XML file it saw my package ID you should not have this one there's my version code 1 there's the version name in this case right 1.1.2018.0501 file is 2 megabytes my app is being supported uh, Amazon focuses on their Amazon devices, which are a variation of Android. And at the moment, my app runs on seven Amazon tablets and phones, but it doesn't run on 15 of them. Um, it doesn't run on their Amazon Fire TV thing, but we never really programmed it for that. That's okay. Here's the important part. It runs on more than 182 different regular old Android devices, 30 that are not supported. I can go off and read over the here the documentation how to make it compatible with all 200 devices. Don't bother. You're going to be compatible with like 99% of devices. 
Um, it's okay that I, it's not compatible on some of their Amazon devices. You can go see which ones exactly if you want there. Don't worry about it. If you got some weird result that unsupported is like 180, okay, that's something we've got to fix. You've got to figure out what's wrong with yours. It should be supported by just about every device, important device out there. Language, okay, well, it's automatically uh, understanding that it's under English um, language. Uh, there is a plugin in Cordova called Globalization that can help you translate your app, and then you can have your app in different languages. There is an option here of export compliance. You have to turn this on. You have to agree to it. You might want to read it. I certify this app may be imported to and exported from the US and all other countries, etc., etc. Basically, it's talking about that your app does not have um, uh, encryption as defined under the statutes because encryption is actually sort of like munitions. You can't quite transport it from nation to nation without special authorization. So if your app is about creating you know, encrypted content. Um, that's what that's about. And you're saying, no, my app isn't about that. And there's only the option to turn it on. So you have to turn that on to publish your app. If our app had Google Maps, it's saying, would you like Amazon to convert it to Amazon Maps? Uh, there should be no problem here. I'll just leave it on. This alias is just some other unique identifier inside of your inside of your dashboard to keep track. Doesn't matter what it is. I'll leave it the same. This is my binary number one. And if you'd like to give special testing instructions to the Amazon representatives about how to test your app, you could. But this, if you do that, it might be slower for your app to be published. This is optional. So you want to click the orange. Save button, not, not save an ad unless you know what you're doing, unless you know you're uploading a couple different versions of the APK. Save. Lastly, here under uh, images and multimedia, to get five out of six. These are various graphics to showcase your image. Some are required, some are optional. You can do at the minimum the re required ones. There's even a spot for a video. So if you recorded a video of how your app works, you can include it. The required items are right here. You need a square PNG or ping file. 512 pixels with transparency for its icon. You need a smaller one of 114 with transparency. You need screenshots. I'll cover screenshots in just a moment. Those are the two required. Uh, promotional images. Promotional images. Um, one is there's only one and it's optional. Um, it's got to be this size, landscape, JPEG or ping, just some sort of graphic that promotes your, uh, your, your app, video, that's optional. So this is the one where, based on our previous days of when we talked about Photoshop, you can create some sorts of graphics and screenshots, you can do this a couple of ways. Let me mention here under publish regarding screenshots. You can take snapshots of the screens of your app or create graphics that show off your app. Notice there are dimensions. Um, in that screen that say right here 3 to 10 pings or JPEGs 
that are um, that are these dimensions, landscape or portrait. If you want to take a screenshot of exactly what your app looks like, remember we can use uh, Google Chrome in the developer tools. More options, remote device. If your device is compatible, we can um, we can pull up your app on the um, on, on the on Google Chrome, and uh, you can press print screen on the uh, on the keyboard. That makes a copy of the screen, and then you open up it in Photoshop and edit it and. Uh, put it the right dimensions and put whatever styling you want and such so that you've got uh, screenshots that are these dimensions it'll want your screenshots in these dimensions now for really so for something fun you might have seen no, let me see let me show you like this um, just for inspiration if you look at Okay, so just randomly, I'm going to go look at some cat apps on Amazon. Cat Sim Online. Uh, I just want to see an example of someone's listing. So you see the way they've done their listing. They have the name of their app. It's going to show the name of the developer. Um, their particular description is all right here. Uh, here's their bullet points. Here's their, here's their long description. And then up here, there's their 512 pixel sized graphic. And then as for screenshots, you know, there's some photos there of the app. Right there, cats wearing sweaters. Cat wearing wizard hats. Okay, I need to go download this later. So you can use Photoshop to make these graphics. You can do the print screen in in Chrome. There's some of these that show like a person's. Have you seen them? Like a it's it's showing a a person's hand holding the device and um, in the device there is the uh, there is the phone so you could do something like this um, hand holding cell phone template now these are iPhones but you could um, you could find a template something like this and then using Photoshop copy your copy and paste your uh, app into the device there and upload it. It's got to be the right dimensions and everything. So you see this one's got vertical graphics. So this is something that you you will need to do. Uh, square graphics, rectangular graphics about your app. Those are the only requirements. You don't have to do the promotional image or the video. Now the promotional image is like that one. See there? It's just you know the logo of the of the app and graphics and such on this other cat app there was also a promotional image over here this one here so our horizontal image 
little poster of the graphic. That's the promotional image. That one's optional. And then a video that's even more effort. But you record a video. You know, one low-tech way is you've got your device running, and then you've got a camera there. And then you're using your, your app, and you're recording that. And that could be a video for you to promote your app. When that's all filled in, you want to save that, and then you'll get the, the sixth check mark, and then you'll, you'll have ultimately the final, uh, the final submit app. Then uh, usually when we do it in class before, if a person is able to submit their app on a Tuesday, by the time we come back on the Thursday, the app is live. So if you're able to submit your app before uh, Thursday, that, that would be nice. Yeah, if not, uh, you have to show uh, for the final assessment day, I would have to see at least that you've created the account, that you've gone through this process, that you've started to fill in all of these items. That would be the final assessment, that you've got some, you've got as many of these check marks as possible, hopefully all of them. Um, and this is the final part about uh, publish right here. Once all six tabs are green, you're ready to publish. So I think um, right after our last break, we're at the lab time. So I think at that point, you're very close to uh, setting up your listing. Um, let's take our last break. It's just like 8.50. We'll take a break until uh, 9. Uh, and then after that, we'll have lab time for you to make sure that your key store works, that you're able to publish the app, starting to create your listing, getting all your check marks. And then uh, that'll be the end of the day.